in the Bible, we can find references to good and evil angels. However, it's important to note that there is no suggestion of a battle between two equal forces of good and evil. Instead, the conflict is portrayed as a fight between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the evil one on earth, where the evil one vastly inferior. Therefore, the existence of evil angels, who are inferior created spirits, needs to be explained. Welcome to SD Case and Courses. In this lesson, we'll explore the origins, evil angels, and their role in religious texts and traditions. In the New Testament, the concept of two spiritual kingdoms was established. The devil, who is a fallen angel, has convinced many other heavenly beings to follow him in his descent. Jesus referred to him as the prince of this world. John chapter 14 verse 30. The devil often tempts humans and tries to bring them down with him. Matthew 25, 41, 2 Peter 2, 4, Ephesians 6, 12, 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 12, 7. In Christian art, the devil is often portrayed as a dragon, which is based on the Apocalypse, chapter 9, verses 11 to 15, and chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. He's referred to as the angel of the bottomless pit, the dragon, and the old serpent, and is depicted as having fought against Archangel Michael. The resemblance between these scenes and the ancient Babylonian tales of the battle between Merodach and the dragon Tiamat is quite remarkable. It's uncertain if this similarity is due to a vague memory of prehistoric reptiles that once roamed the earth, which were passed down by oral tradition. However, those who are curious can refer to Bousset's The Antichrist Legend, translated by Keen London, 1896, for further information. That book also includes a fascinating discussion on the origins of the Babylonian dragon myth. On that same note, the Bible reveals the evolution of Hebrew beliefs about evil. Early beliefs, according to the story of Adam and Eve's disobedience in Genesis 3, make it clear that there is a malevolent force that seeks to harm humanity. Similarly, Genesis 6, one implies that angels fell from grace after having relationships with human women, but that and many controversies around the Nephilim are disputed. We do not have time to go into that topic. Moving on, one example of how evil spirits affected people in the Bible include Samuel 19, when Saul is said to be possessed by an evil spirit, but this might be a metaphor. A more explicit example can be found in 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 19-23, to 23, where a spirit appears amid the heavenly army and offers to be a lying spirit in the mouth of Achab's false prophets at the Lord's invitation. Speaking specifically of Satan, the stories in Job chapter 1 and 2 paint a picture of Satan as a jealous intruder who envies Job. It's interesting to note that he's portrayed as a fallen angel, and he can only harm Job with God's permission. As we dive deeper into theological thought, we can see a progression in understanding. For example, in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1, David's sin is attributed to the wrath of the Lord, which stirred up David. While 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1 states that Satan moved David to number Israel. Job chapter 4, verse 18 also gives a clear statement about the fall. In his angels, he found wickedness. In Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, Satan is referred to as the adversary who makes accusations against Jesus, the high priest, in front of the Lord. According to the fathers, Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel chapter 28 are the main sources on the subject of Satan's fall. Moreover, our Lord used imagery from Ezekiel chapter 28 when he said to his apostles, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Luke chapter 10 verse 18. Furthermore, in the book of Job, some passages mention avenging angels. Some interpret them as fallen spirits, like in chapter 33, verse 23, which says that even if a thousand death-dealing angels come against someone, not one of them will wound them. Additionally, Job chapter 20, verse 15, says that if someone unjustly accumulates riches, an angel will drag them out of their house and make them vomit it all up. Other biblical texts like Proverbs 17, verse 11, Psalm 34, verses 5 to 6, and Psalm 77, verse 49, and especially Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 33, also mention the role of angels in carrying out God's justice. However, it's important to note that in some of these passages, the angels, even when they do something we consider negative, are not portrayed as evil spirits. 
and that is evil angels in a nutshell. The devil convinced other angels to follow him. He is considered the king of this world, but the evil angels can only do us harm if God allows it, and God would only allow us to be harmed because he can bring good results from it. Therefore, in the end, God is always in control, and if we stay close to Christ, we have no need to fear fallen angels whatsoever. Thanks for learning with us. May God bless you forever.